say thank you, Jesus, for your grace, your mercy, your favor upon my life. I am in your presence. Give me the grace to remain in your presence by your word and your spirit. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Shall we clap for Jesus? We may be seated. First John chapter three, verse five. First Peter chapter two, verse twenty-two. And then Second Corinthians five, verse seventeen. I hope and trust we manage to lead all of them. Let me start with the, uh, First Peter, chapter two, verse twenty-two. We are talking about the new life in Christ Jesus. What do I mean? Jesus came to destroy the enemy of your life. And who is the enemy of your life? Of course, we all know. Do you know your enemy? Hmm? Do you know your enemy? Who is your enemy? Eh? Satan. Ah. <laughs> okay, what can make Satan to be your enemy in the first place? Remember, I, I have quoted four uh, scriptures. First John chapter 3 verse 5. And then First Peter chapter 2 verse 21. And then Second Corinthians. 5 verse 17. Remember the last one, the Bible says that if anyone is in Christ is a new what? The hold as what? And the new has come. Now, this is my question. Who is your enemy? You said Satan. Satan is powerless as long as you are not calling any of his properties. And what is the property of Satan? Sin, of course. Listen to this book of 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 21. Are you there? To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you. Christ does what? S suffered for the punishment that you deserve. That punishment that you deserve. He suffered because of you and me. To this you were called. Called to what? Let me finish. Leaving you as an example that you should follow his steps. We should do what? Okay, let me give you this example. Here is a giant. There is a man who wants to beat you or kill you. And then before you know it, a giant appeared. And he starts now protecting you, defending you. After defeating your enemy, then the giant said, follow me. Do what? And you know the danger, if you cannot follow the giant, you know the danger. Are you going to remain behind or you follow the giant? Who is the giant in this case? Jesus Christ. Leaving you as an example. To this you were called. 22. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. Jesus never committed any sin. He never lied. He never, you know, crooked any or proposed any woman. But he was condemned to death because of you and me. I've been saying this, people of God. Church is not a place of, you know, discussing issues pertaining to whatever or maybe a place where you go and register your presence as a member church is a place of worship which can lead you to what to salvation jesus came to this life not to recruit members 
That's why if you follow him, he never left any church here. I mean, the name of the church to say, oh, this is the name of my church. No. He just said, go into all the world. And preach what? Whoever believes and be baptized shall be what? Whoever does not shall be condemned. And this sign shall follow those who believe. In my name. He never said in my church. He said in my what? Name. This sign shall follow those who believe. They shall lay hands on the sick people. And the sick people shall recover. Who are those people who can speak in the name of Jesus? Remember he gave them authority over darkness in his name. Meaning, if you start following this man Jesus, you are no longer a sinner, but a righteous person in form of a human being. Representing his mission, Satan will no longer, will no longer, will no longer be a threat to your life. It is you now who will be a threat to him. There are people they have declared in the spiritual realm untouchable. But they are human beings like you and me. Because they are not living, you know, that sin of life anymore. Let me I finish this one. Um, I, I, I want to combine these three so that we get the point. When they heard their insults at him, he did not reiterate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. <clears throat> I like this one. He made no threats. He made no threat. They insulted him. They did what they did to him. He never said, okay, you see, when I go back to my father, some of you, you die like chicken. You die. No. Jesus knew where he was standing and his mission here on earth. What is your mission here on earth? Is it to marry, bear children, you'd still be rich, or be known all over the world? If that is the case, you don't know what you are doing, and you don't know where you are going. He never made any threat. Listen to 24. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross. So that we might die to sin and live for the righteousness. By his own wounds, you have been healed. He carried all your problems. The problems that are disturbing you and me. The nightmare. The poverty limitation. Witches and wizards. Jesus carried them all. In his wounds, we are healed. Let me call you to the book of John. You can go and read, you know, slowly when you go home. This is John chapter 3. First John chapter 3, verse 5. But you, are you there? But you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins. And in him, no sin. I will repeat this. But you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins. And in him is no sin. Now verse 6. No one who lives in him keeps on what? Sinning. No one continues to sin as either seen him or known him. Dear children, this is verse 7. Do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does right is righteous. Just as he is righteous. Verse 8. The one who does what is sinful is of the devil. Because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. Jesus came to destroy what? The activities of Satan are in our body. Look at the world at large. What is happening in the world? I'll go step by step. 
But you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins. I was talking about the issue of Jairus and the daughter. When Jairus approached Jesus, a messenger came behind Jairus to say, stop disturbing the master. Your daughter is dead. Then Jesus said, no. Don't be afraid. Just believe. Your daughter will be healed. And this is a situation which is known to everyone. As long as you are dead, there's no hope again for you to come back to life. But Jesus appeared. When he appeared, a new restoration has come. He appeared to take away sin from us. You cannot defeat sin by yourself. Sin is more powerful more than your thinking capacity. This is why you see even elderly people are misbehaving. Young ones are misbehaving. You are even laughing at them to say, look at these people. They are old enough to see that this is bad. They cannot defeat sin. He appeared so that you can defeat what? Sin in his name. He came to destroy the works of the devil. Where? In the air? No, in your body. When you possess Jesus, you possess a new life. There is no sin again in you. And if you don't know this, Satan cannot attack you as long as you are not calling his properties. Do you know that? Devil cannot attack you as long as you are not living a sinful life. I am not saying you will not come to you. You will come. But it cannot destroy you. Remember, he followed Jesus in that book of Luke for. I mean, look for. He followed him, and Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. And he started narrating rubbish to him. If you worship me, all this will be yours. If you do this, then you'll be this. Jesus said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone. If it was not the Holy Spirit in him and in his body, something, you know, of this world is part of his life. Jesus could have been no go down and say, yes, I worship you and give me this. This is why when you become born again, the spirit of God will enter your life to take over your thinking. He'll be the one to decide. People have been talking about me sometimes. No, mulengataya kufirilo, what and what, nangumuntu wakwa. They don't know. Sometimes, me personally, I would want to go anywhere. Anywhere where there is. But you know, when you hear the Holy Spirit telling you to say, don't go there. And then you force yourself because you want to please people. The same people start living at you when the Spirit of God departed from you. To say, look. He was a man of God. He's finished now. It is only him who has got power to tell you what to do, where to go, and where you are not supposed to go. Because you are not living according to the senses of this world, but under the instructions of the Holy Spirit. Are you telling me that uh, I can't go to uh, uh, angry round and eat angry round inside there, where you eat every day? Am I not a human being like you? I am. But where the Spirit of God cannot permit you to go and buy food and start eating there. Why? You'll be seeing things that you cannot understand. And if care is not taken, you leave that place laughing. <laughs> man of God. Who is man of God? Because you are trying to prove to the world that you are powerful, you are on your own. No one can defeat sin through his mind. It is only the Spirit of God in you. This is why you see even inside the church, people lie. You ask them a simple question. What is this? No, I knew nothing about this one. This is why we need now a prophet to come in. Because a word of prophet will naked your mind. Are you going to say no? No, deliver me, man of God. Deliver me. That is the nature of human beings. So he appeared to take away sin from us. So that we live like Jesus. Mm. I hope. Let me. Uh, live. 
the word like that. But I want you to know this. No one is powerful except God Almighty. No one can say no to sin. I'm sure before you get baptized, you confess something. Yes, back in Gatuleva, Chua Kualevati, Bamitanta, Mikamia, and that Landeme Bushovelo, Pinch, and Mench, we shall go and go him. I remember one lady, Bafro Kulanda, Nariponye Fumo. You get the picture. Bafro Kulanda, Nariponye Fumo. Bam Kuvensha Mench, Valle Kosat, Kuricho Mishireko, and the husband was standing there. And he was away for some time. Are you going to confess that one? You are risking your marriage. You are risking your what? Which one do you want to risk? Your relationship with Jesus or your marriage? <laughs> eh? If you say, yes, I aborted the child. And the husband will say, ah, ah, from where? Who was responsible? So it's better to say, no, I've confessed everything. Mm. Put this person in the water. You cannot go inside the water. The man of God said, no, something is still, you know. Go there and confess. Let the people, please, all the place, keep quiet. We want to hear from the sister's confession. Can you confess? Hmm? Can you confess? And your husband is there. Him too want to be baptized so that you start a new life. And then you say, I aborted the child. Ah, I'm sure your husband will refuse to be baptized. Yes, until you know you explain who was be, I mean, responsible for that one. Human beings cannot, you know, defeat Satan and his activities. This demon is very cunning. He always, you know, capitalizes on our thinking. Because we thought, through your thinking, you can, you know, defeat Satan. No, it is not your thinking, it is meditation. Through the Holy Spirit. Through what? Meditation and thinking is not the same. Have you ever heard someone said, I was meditating, then I developed a headache? Hmm? Have you ever heard? No. Only thinking that can give you what? You are thinking about the Nkongole that you cannot pay. Hmm? You are thinking about something which is beyond your power. Before you know it, headache. Bam, bam, bam. You can't even sleep. It is only meditation that can give you what? Solution. Go and read these uh, scriptures and sit down. He came or appeared to take away what? Sin. It is sin that gives Satan a platform in our lives. Without sin, sometimes we, you know, we argue a lot about Christianity. Even the way we talk about, you know, the word of God. As if it's, you know, we are qualified to say, no, this one is this, this one. Understanding the language does not mean that you understand the language of the Holy Spirit. It is only the Holy Spirit who can make you to understand what? The language of the Holy Spirit. So... He came to destroy what? Hmm? He came to destroy what? Sin. Are we like us? Eh? I'm talking to you, church. Are we like us? Then we are not ready to be saved. Those who are ready to go to heaven or to be saved, you need to live like Christ. You follow Christ. You walk like Christ. You talk like Christ. Everything that you do, Christ must be part of it. Thank you. Go and read this one. God bless you.